Today, let's see how we can use calculus to show that this Cooper equation has exactly one root on this interval. Now, for exactly one root, this right here takes the most amount of work because we have to do two parts, at least one and also at most one. And let me write down the note right here for you guys first. To do at least one root on a certain interval, we will have to use the intermediate value zero. And then for the at most one root, we will have to use contradiction and also row zero. But let's focus on this one right here first. Here we go, proof. This equation is equal to zero already, so I'm, I'm just going to call the left-hand side to be our function. And in order for us to use the IPT, we will have to mention that this function is continuous, which it is because it's a cubic function. It's always continuous, but I'm just going to say that's continuous on the interval that we care, which is negative 2 to 2. And I think this is pretty clear because it's the cubic function. You can also mention that if you would like. Now, how this works is we just have to plug in negative 2 into the x and then positive 2 into the x. And hopefully, one output is negative, the other one is positive, and then we'll be done. So I'll just say, note that f of negative 2, we have negative 2 to the third power minus 15, and then negative 2 plus 7. That's negative 8 plus 30 is 22, plus 7, we get 29. But don't just mention 29, in my opinion. You should really mention that this is positive. Now, hopefully, when we plug in the other endpoint, we get negative results. f of 2 is this. Let's see. That's 8 minus 30, which is negative 22, plus 7. Aha, it is negative, negative 15. And let's mention that being less than 0. Once you have done this, you can just say, so by the intermediate value 0, we can say that there is at least one root. And I'm just going to use R because we're talking about root. You can also use C, which is a more standard notation when we do the IPT. But it doesn't really matter. There is at least one R, so that R is in between of negative 2 and 2. Right here, notice I do not have to put an equal sign here because I know when we have negative 2 and 2, the results are not equal to 0. So R must be in between. So that f of r is equal to 0. Yeah, that's just a math way to say that there is a root, right? Technically, at least one root. Now, this part is done. Now for the second part, we will have to show the equation has at most one root. Because when you have something that's at least one and at most one, that means you have exactly one. And to do this, we will have to use contradiction and also row theorem and the row theorem is just a specific case of the mean value theorem okay we are going to start off by writing assume for contradiction to make it clear so assume for a contradiction Whenever you have at most one of something, try to use contradiction. Usually it works out pretty well. But we have to think about what's the opposite of at most one. Well, at most one means mm, less than or equal to one, right? The opposite is just more than one. So we can say, what if there are two of them? So assume for contradiction, there are two roots. I will call them A and B. On that interval, negative two, two and then i can also mention that with a is less than b okay and then what i want to happen is that such that because both of them are the roots for that equation so we can say f of a 
it's equal to f of b and that's equal to zero so the choice of a and b doesn't really matter so that's why we can just say without loss of generality a is less than b now when we have f of a is equal to f of b this is the time that we say the row zero if f of a and f of b are different then you say mean for your theorem and then you do the slope of the line connecting the endpoints but anyways though before we can use the row theorem we have to mention the following know that even though we mentioned it earlier but let's mention it again f is continuous on our interval negative 2 to 2 and because our function f is a cubic function so it's of course also differentiable but if it's differentiability we just need to mention the interval without the endpoints right so in order for us to use this we must have this statement in our proof now by row theorem THM stands for theorem we know that there is some number C and C is going to be somewhere in between of negative 2 and 2 so I just say negative 2 less than C less than 2 such that F prime of C it's equal to zero when we have the row zero the derivative at a c is equal to zero why well have a look let's say in general we have a and b here because f of a is equal to f of b so they have the same y value okay because f is continuous so you have to make sure you connect them without leaving out your marker right but you also have to make sure that f is differentiable so do not do this that's not okay well if you follow what we have a continuous function and also differentiable function connecting this and that you can see that there is some point that the derivative has to be zero so that's where the c is yeah so that's what we have but we haven't computed the derivative yet right remember this right here is our function take the derivative of that we will get 3x squared minus 15 so if you plug in c into our derivative we get 3c squared minus 15 however there's an issue right here because from here we see that c is in between of negative 2 and 2 so we can say the absolute value of c is less than 2 now to get c squared we can just square both sides so c squared well don't really need an absolute value anymore because it's always going to be positive anyways now c squared we're just going to get less than 4. have a look we have this right here i'm going to replace the c squared with less than 4 and then we have 3 times 4 minus 15. that's just 12 minus 15 which will end up with negative 3. it's not possible you see f prime of c no matter what you plug in into the derivative the derivative will be less than negative 3. there's no way for us to get zero for the derivative so at the end right here we have the contradiction so that means we have successfully showed that there is at most one root by using contradiction and also the row zero like this and finally once you do this part that part when you have an equation that has at least one root and also at most one root at the same time you can just say that hey it must be having exactly one root and that's it